Hi, um, my name is Carrie Brown Tess, as I said before. And uh, I'm looking at co creation in Chilean uh, math teacher uh, training. And so I'm, I'm specifically looking at um, um, the ways that math teachers, sort of in a grassroots way, train themselves in, in sort of a cyclical roller coaster sort of type requirements for teacher education in the ways that that evolves and changes depending on who's in office. Um, so, uh, go ahead and. So I'll tell you a little bit about specifically what I'm looking at. I'm looking at a, a Japanese model of teacher training called lesson study uh, that focuses on um, a particular problem. So if I was a math teacher, um, notice that my students are having a particularly hard time distinguishing between uh, procedures for adding fractions versus multiplying fractions and maybe confusing the operations. And so I would get with a group of teachers and I would say I'm having trouble with this, and then maybe some of the other teachers would say we are too. What are some of the things that you've done? So you've got young and old teachers together talking about well, what has worked in the past. Maybe we'll look at some research. Maybe we'll look at a couple different curriculums uh, um, who have addressed it. And then we will pick one. We will design a lesson together. And then one of us will teach it, and everyone else will watch. And, and the job of everyone else in this lesson study is to watch your, your student and to learn from the children. So we, maybe we will have this well-researched lesson and we see what actually happens with our kids. And then in that process, we'll come back after, the, after that lesson study, we'll come back and we'll discuss um, what did we learn. We might say like this was very uh, highly researched and demonstrated to be very productive, but with our kids, it made no sense. As soon as we said it, they were thinking something else. And, and there's a, a disconnect from what happens up here and what's going on in the brains of the people who are watching you. It can be very hard to understand what, what, that, what is happening. So, um, I, well, I want to I wanna go back and, and say why I'm doing this. Um, I, there was a very famous study that came out on the work of lesson study. It sort of, uh, I'll say more about its evolution and, and what it's done in the U.S., but I was a teacher in Florida uh, who was a part of this huge national project to, to do lesson studies. Uh, millions of dollars were spent to, to incorporate these in classrooms. And um, I will say that it was one of the most productive. Um, it, it hit me exactly where I needed to, to grow as a teacher. Um, and so it was so impactful for me. So I've, I've incorporated it in my own classrooms and I incorporated it as a math teacher educator at the university. Um, I've uh, partnered with local, uh, local schools to set up lesson studies for my pre-service teachers. And, um, and then uh, I've partnered with Roberto Araya, who is a professor in STEM education here, who um, has been doing the same sort of research in Santiago. So, um, so there's that. That's why I'm here. Um, so a little bit, I want to say a little bit about uh, the, the math teacher learning and this, uh, a little bit about situated perspective in lesson study, but I don't want to bore you with too much. <laughs> so um, go ahead and do the next slide. So teacher perspective. Um, so to say a little bit about um, teacher research, when we talk about what is a good teacher, you'll find that a lot of research will simplify a good teacher to test scores. Like a kid did this, now they do this, they were a great teacher. Um, really ignoring the complex ways that one kids learn. Kids could be moving forward in some concept but test below or to, to their scores can fall because you can only test very narrow strips of information and um, and sometimes there's been studies that have showed that that a kid's understanding is so complex and deep that the question mis, uh, misled them and so when they are actually much more advanced than, than the question presumed um, they end up being demonstrated as not knowing some subject, mm -hmm. and so it's a very um, it's a it's a complex problem. And so um, there's been research from the from the 80s essentially talking about how when we talk about teachers' productivity or um, teachers being good teachers or bad teachers, this is overly simple simplistic, but. Um, unfortunately, this is kind of what, the way we talk about it at the national level. When when we talk in this way, we need to move away from these sort of test modules or, or simplifying all of what teachers do into a test um, of them, which Chile, uh, I guess in the last 10 years, has recently in, in instituted a test of their teachers, which we've been doing in the U.S. So there's a lot of trajectories that we are exactly on the same line. Um, so testing teacher knowledge, testing students, but, but research is saying that we need to move towards the art 
of what teachers are doing and the, and the ways that they um, creatively work individually with students, how, the way that they are problem solving instantly. Like I'm presenting something and a, and a child gives me information and I'm able to respond to it uh, in a way that helps them to overcome some barrier to understanding some concept. And so, um, I already said that. Uh, I forgot that I put I put these on the list. Um, so yeah, uh, so what, what I am saying is in, in my research and what I want to, to do is, is move for move towards, and go ahead one more time, um, uh, instead of asking about a program's, uh, a, a teacher's pro, uh, fidelity to a program, which is a lot of the research, like this uh, best practice is XYZ and this teacher does XYZ, therefore they're great. Um, I want to talk about a program's fidelity to a teacher and the, the ways that we understand that we learn and grow and the ways that we think. Um, and to the community. So, um, yeah. Um, lesson study, I, and I described essentially what that is. Um, it's centered on teachers' interests. They come up with the problem, what I need to grow versus, um, you know, a lot of professional development will be, um, here's this thing we want you to grow in, and everyone does it, and they get a binder, and then they finish, and the binder goes on the shelf and pretty much collects cobwebs. Um, it's teacher-led, it's focused on student lear learning, as I said, the teachers are watching students and, and gathering information about how this practice impacts the, the child. It's inquiry-based, it's reflective, which um, studies have over and over and over again demonstrated that, that this, that being reflective in, te in teaching is one of the most impactful things that, that a teacher can do. Teachers who are um, actively engaged in reflection in their practice continually grow and, uh, and it impact their students in positive ways, and it's collaborative. So, and you can so here's the little bit of a history, go ahead and click again. So, um, Lesson City was born out of the ideas of Boya, uh, uh, and he, I know he ended up in Stanford, but he was originally um, um, in Austria, and uh, in uh, John Dewey, who uh, was from the University of Chicago, and their ideas of what learning is and, and, and how that happens. And so, go ahead and click, in 19, uh, well, from the 1880s till about 1960, um, lesson study was adopted and formed grassroots-wise from Japanese teachers. It, it, it happened in these little cells where they started developing this practice, and then it sort of changed the system from the ground up. In fact, if you go to get a teacher uh, certification in, in Japan, um, it is often just lessons, not just lesson studies, but lesson studies is a, is a huge part of teacher training. Um, if you go to your state conferences or national conferences, you will find a lesson study in, uh, as a part of it. They'll bring a classroom in, and instead of having a speaker being the expert, it's almost like things are just completely flipped. It, the kids are there, and, and everyone sort of is an expert um, watching these kids learn, and then the teacher teaches, and then we all talk about it. So it's just such an, it's an interesting thing. It's completely foreign as, as far as the U.S. experience of teacher training, um, and I think so as well here in, in Chile. Um, so in, in the 1990s, uh, we started uh, in the U.S. partnering with Japan and, and developing um, lesson studies. I told you I was one of the teachers who got to be a part of that project. And then uh, next, and then in 2006, Chile had their own experience with partnering with Japan and, and doing lesson study. Um, some interesting th things that have happened is that this is all very dependent on who is in, who is in the presidency because you'll see um, we've had similar, uh, in the U.S. we had about 40 uh, universities who were taking up lesson study uh, research with schools and in Chile they had about 20. And then with the changeover, I think this was Bachelorette's first term, um, after her first term, then um, it went from 20 institutions who were instituting lesson study to two, which we in the U.S. had very much the same thing with 40 to about two universities who were doing this sort of research. So um, it's a lot, the, the, the funding for it drops, it's a very, um, it can be very uh, cost intensive because you are pulling teachers out of the classroom, you have to sub, and you're essentially using the school time to, to do your professional development in a, in a more creative way, so yes. Okay, so there's a little history about how that came. So my 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 theoretical lens that I want to use to sort of analyze the learning that's happening in these lesson studies is uh, a term called conocimiento, which if, I'm sure that most of us who speak Spanish we understand what conocimiento means. But it was a term um, that was developed through Gloria Nzodua uh, in her concept of like borderland theory. 
Um, and it's, it's, it's this part of like knowing being this kind of cycle. And you, we hit these moments, uh, and she uses a Nuadal term, which is an indigenous term in, in the southern US, um, called Napatna, which talks about like tension. So if you think about any time you've ever learned anything in your life, like maybe um, a loved one said, listen, when you do this, you really hurt me, right? We've all, and I think we've all had those sort of learning experiences. And then you have two choices in the cycle of conocimiento. You have the choice to say, I didn't realize I, didn't realize I was doing that. Um, tell me what I can do differently, right? This would be, uh, you're stepping into conocimiento, you're stepping into the napatla, which is this moment of tension so that you can grow and change. There is also desconocimiento, which you'll notice that we have either been this person or we've seen this happen when you present something that's hard for someone to hear that um, they might say like, oh, well, you know, I'm sorry that that bothered you. Or, uh, or we just kind of disconnect from it. That's called desconocimiento, where we reject the opportunity to learn so that we can stay in our safe, comfortable space. So um, I'm going to be using conocimiento because it, it, the, the lesson study is very community oriented. So I want to see the ways that this conocimiento and conocimiento kind of play out in the ways that these teachers are learning. Um, so the significance of the research, it's bullet, so you'll have to hit each bullet. <laughs> Uh, I want to understand the teacher's perceptions of learning and agency in lesson study, and by better understanding this, we can be, make better political um, and education decisions for the training of our teachers. Um, and I want to be, a, I think this can help inform education policy, what things we will invest in. We want to invest in teacher education that's more productive and supportive of the ways that teachers are thinking. And, um, and Chile offers a unique, important glimpse. Uh, I mean, m most of us here, I feel like, understand a lot of the, the student movements and the ways that, that um, uh, the, the teachers and the, the um, just within the school system, people have organized to, to bring about the things they want to see in, in their education system. And so it offers a unique glimpse that, that into this whole process um, that would be useful, I think, for, for international conversation on, on teacher training, and, but specifically math teacher training. My question is, how do communities of practice, such as lesson study, which are bound together with the question of what is to be achieved and how, facilitate professional growth? And um, I'll be doing interviews, lesson study observations, focus groups. Um, I'll, uh, I have some um, individual prompts where uh, teachers will be reflecting on their learning, either recording it or, or typing it out. And so I'm really um, just looking for a window into this process. And, uh, Yeah. Are you going to be, in terms of your field site, your field sites, will you be embedded in particular classrooms or, you know, do you know of particular lesson study groups that you'll be observing? Yeah, good question. Um, so, uh, the, Roberto Araya, the professor that I'm working with, has been working with lesson study for the past, I think, 10 years now. Um, and so, I'm kind of joining a project that's already in process to kind of look at it from a different angle. So. So um, I'll be focusing on middle school uh, classrooms. Um, it's what, I mean, we don't have middle schools here. It's just the older basic school. But um, that same age group I'll be focusing on, mostly because that's most of my experience. So there'll be less barriers for me. But um, yeah, so. And like a, a swap, I guess, inheriting a research pool that he has, perhaps you haven't sussed it out yet. but. Um, sort of pertinent to the last presentation where we see the landscape of schooling in Chile is quite different, stratified, mm -hmm. largely by socioeconomics. Yeah. Will you be, is that almost like a variable of the yeah. study yeah, to yeah, yeah, understand yeah. how lesson studies in particular educational environments, teachers who are teaching to particular kinds of students with particular needs, yeah, you know, that sort of changes? Good questions. Um, so the particular schools I'm looking at now, there's one um, private boys school that um, that was a ninth grade class that he was working with and then there's two seventh and eighth grade classes that are low, lower socioeconomic status um, there is a lot of weirdness as far as like what schools you we have access to uh, I think for private schools they tend to be harder for us to have access to um, so and then also because I'm looking at specifically communities of practice um, I have to have a school that's doing this mm -hmm. and predominantly this is not probably happening um, and there's uh, research after, uh, I forget, after uh, Bacloretz finished her first term, um, 
after after that we saw like the universities kind of dropping out of doing this sort of uh, research with schools and because of that like even then like there, I, there was like two universities even doing it and so um, and once they dropped out we, we saw like some teachers carried it on um, but they were completely unresourced mm -hmm. and sometimes actually were fighting administration so administration would be um, there's this concept it happens in the US as well where um, we have a very capitalistic view of training teachers which means um, we don't choose anything, everything is kind of bombarded, and so we found that teachers actually end up not doing anything because there's just so much information, so many like programs and, and um, philosophies that are kind of mismatched and, and competing. And so it sort of creates a catatonic state in teachers and they just do whatever works. So, yeah. So if you end up, as I expect you will, like producing research on effectiveness and how this goes in Chile and what the current state is, um, do you expect that that publishing that could, if it seems to be successful, could lead to broader adaptation and could give justification for broader adaptation in schools here in Chile? Um, possibly, yeah. And I'm, I'm, I feel like I, I want to focus more on, on the teacher's perspective in a way that says, like, this is what was happening versus, like, test scores. So, so success is such a complicated um, term, but I, I hope that when we understand the ways that teachers learn, that we can adopt our, our professional development. There's a lot of debate in the U.S. over whether lesson study will work. Um, there's been papers that explicitly said U.S. teachers can't do this, which I, it goes back to the ways that it happened. If you look at the implementation in Japan, it started in 1880 to 1960. Like that's a pretty amazing like. <laughs> test trial period. <laughs> um, so to, if you think of like, can, I can't imagine this happening in the US because literally like we, we kind of have the same thing. Every four years you have a president who puts a new program and they have to have something that tags to their name to show that they were successful in some way. So and because that teachers just have to deal, right? And so, and I think the same thing is here too in, in this sort of competitive vision of, of teacher training. And so, um, but if we could allow teachers to kind of grassroots grow their own professional development, I think that they're that you'll have a lot more buy-in from teachers, and they can make it work in the systems that they live in. So, so hopefully. How um, how did this make it over to Chile? I don't know if you said that as part of your mapping and timeline thing. But yeah. Might well, uh, it it was um, from Japan. It was like they did a very like international um, reach. It was part like here. It was very much partnered with APEC and. And so um, in, in the U.S., there was a couple professors who partnered with university professors, but it was very, it was like exported almost, like the university systems uh, in Japan. So right around the late 1990s to 2000s, pretty much most countries were sort of exposed to this. It, for the U.S., it came, became really popular with this book called The Teaching uh, Gap, where they were comparing different international professional development. So, it got really popular and then it just kind of continued to spread. Any other questions? All right, thank you.